Hello, everyone. Welcome to Todd Talks. I am joined by Mr. Jim Davis. And today we are examining a, couple, a lot of things on the show uh, right at this moment. And then later on, we're going to be talking about clerics and whether they need gods or not and uh, you know, how you handle that in the game. But right now, we are talking about a brand new Unearthed Arcana. It is the Warlock, the Undead. And we're going to be comparing this to the Warlock, the Undying. Lots of people are making comparisons uh, mm -hmm, to these mm -hmm. two subclasses uh, for obvious reasons, but they're two very different subclasses. So Yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly. What are your initial impressions about, first off, the Undead, by the way? Ooh, I wish all warlock patrons were this beefy yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that hit this hard <laughs> right I, my, actually my first thought was way to step on the undying's thematic toes <laughs> yeah. uh, and then i actually read the class ability so i was like man <laughs> uh, it's a strong class right like it it is a it is a combat damage dealing mm -hmm. sort of class it's got a lot of neat tricks it can do i love some of the abilities like the, the theme of them mm -hmm. um you know, at the same time, I try to remind myself this is playtest material. It's always a little overpowered to so they get easier to tone down than it is to build up, that kind of thing. Um, but I, I like it overall. I, I like it because like you can play like a death knight or or you know, some other kind of undead themed caster that's not a necromancer. Yeah, I I I I it is very death knight mm -hmm. uh, heavy. In, in, in a lot of these features and I, I love that and I know a lot of people have obviously been discussing uh, an ability that we will get to and how it works with Eldritch Blast but this mm. feels like very much a warlock that wants to get like not necessarily get hit but it's very effective in hand-to-hand -hand combat yeah um, yeah I mean I, we can go ahead and dive right into it but yes well i'm sure we'll eventually discuss and uh, the ramifications for eldritch blast <laughs> yeah so we'll go ahead and look at first off this is the warlock the undead it's expanded spell list we have bane false life blindness deafness phant phantasmal force speak with the dead phantom steed death ward greater invisibility anti-life shell and cloud kill yeah it's yeah. a it's a strong spell list. Certainly not all of these scale because you have to cast them at like a top, uh, you know, your top spell slots uh, for a warlock. Um, Bane is really fun. Yeah. Well, and then getting it as like on a short rest refresh, as opposed to the once per long rest that like thief of, uh, was it thief of fate, thief of five fates, whatever yeah. I get you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, th I think I would take that over false life because if I wanted false life, I'd go fiendish vigor in that sense. But um, And you're already getting temp HP. You're, yeah, and that's the other thing, right? It doesn't quite uh, stack up that well with form of the dead or form of dread. But uh, Yeah, it does not stack with form of dread. So I kind of feel like eh, I wouldn't necessarily do it. Uh, can you cast false life on someone else though? I do not believe so. Yeah, so, uh, but blindness, deafness, phantasmal fort, like all of these kind of remind me of Lord Soth in a lot of ways, actually. Especially yeah. when we get to Phantom Steed. <laughs> <laughs> I love Phantom Steed. <laughs> yeah, Phantom Steed is fantastic. It's a great spell. Um, you can flavor this to be exceptionally creepy. Um, yeah. Greater certainly. invisibility is a little surprising. Oh, that's delayed. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say greater invisibility sort of speaks with a lot of the spirit features that the class has, right? Like that's true. That's the kind of thing that I really like. I love anti life shell, and it doesn't help with the uh, eldritch spam nature that sometimes warlocks can have, and I think El the undead really can favor. Mm -hmm. um, but El anti life shell is a great spell. Like no, you can't touch me. Don't even get within ten feet of me. You know. And well, does cool. uh, let's see anti life shell. You, uh, this is a fifth level. A shimmering barrier extends out from you in a 10 foot radius and it moves with you. Uh, the barrier prevents an, an affected creature from passing or reaching through. An affected creature that casts spells or makes attacks, ranged, or with reach weapons through the barrier, uh, they, ca they can. Mm -hmm. or, or they cannot. They can cast spells. Make attacks. Okay, so they have to be. Yeah, they just physically weapon. can't get close to you. So all, all you fighters and barbarians, like all your stunning monks, mm -hmm. you know, all that, they're they're not anywhere near you. Now, my fifteen foot reach bugbear barbarian with the glaive 
no no right. problem you know but he's got big monkey arms so <laughs> this is a very tanky now if you are going melee impact with the blade this is a very tanky tanky warlock um, yeah you can be on the yeah. battlefield and not have to worry about anybody else coming after you it'll be very do that yeah especially if it's like you're you're you want to block something or block entry to like it's less about you dealing damage and more about getting in someone else's way that anti-life shell really works for that um i like the spell list it's it, it it's very comparable to our other class that we're going to be talking about or the other patron yeah um but uh it's strong it reinforces the theme i'm glad it doesn't have animate dead because then you'd have to worry about short rest animate deads <laughs> <laughs> well, and you kind of already have to. If you look at the Unearthed Arcana variants spell sure. list, Warlocks get uh, Animate Dead. Um, yes. Yeah, they do, don't they? It is. It, that, that, that is a, a problem. So let's <laughs> look at the Undying. This came out in Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide a long time ago. Mm-hmm. They've got False Life, Ray of Sickness. They've got Blindness and Deafness as well. Silence is very creepy. Fain, fain Death. Speak with the Dead as well. That's another one. They've also got Death Ward, Aura of Life, Contagion, and Legend Lore. Um, <laughs> so we're seeing some similarities in the spell list, but th- then things diverge quite quickly. It's quite quickly, yes. Yeah, quite quickly. Yeah, I, like immediately. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, but I, I think what you said, it is worth noting that The Undying was in Sword of Coast Adventurer's Guide, which was one of the first non-adventure uh supplements released for fifth edition and i i think it shows right like i think yeah. it's worth noting that fifth edition is long in the tooth it's been out for a while and you know just because of how we've all internalized the mechanics of it and, and everything the stuff that came out earlier probably isn't going to be of the same caliber that what comes out later that's it just seems like uh you know something that's going to happen um so yeah i and i'm also i don't I, I understand the idea that like maybe a subclass will step on the toes of another one. I accept that. I'm sure. very happy for it. I'm all for it, even a subclass being updated later on, though I can see why that might be an issue for some people as well. But like yeah. if, if I, I, you know, if this is what you want, um, if, if this is, these are two very different flavors to me. Yes. Yeah. Certainly very dark and Gothic, but mm-hmm. And, and we see this right away. So we're, we're going to go ahead and scroll down for the undying here. Um, you're among the dead. This, yeah. uh, you get spare the, the spare the dying count, uh, cantrip. Additionally, undead have a difficulty time harming, harming you. They actually have to make a wisdom saving throw basically, basically to even attack you unless you do damage to them. Uh, yes. Yeah. It, if, if they, however, successfully save, they're immune to this effect for 24 hours. This is very handy if you're in Ravenloft and you're trying to kill off a bunch of like zombies, uh, oh, skeleton yeah. hordes. The fact that they have to, this is like a permanent warding bond, right? Against Essentially, undead. yeah. Uh, sanctuary is, I think, maybe what you're thinking sanctuary, about. Sanctuary, sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah, Sanctuary, absolutely. Uh, yeah, which normally has no concentration. It's really kind of good cleric spell for low-level clerics, keep them alive in combat. It's how me and Pruitt <laughs> duoed the Curse of Strahd, him a cleric and me a paladin, just the two oh, of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I really like about it, and this is sort of deep in the, the mechanic weeds, is that uh, that last line, an undead is also immune to this effect for 24 hours if you target it with an attack or harmful spell. Nothing about it happens to be in an AOE that you happened to drop near it. Right. You know? So there are still ways to get around the, uh, you know, you can't mess with it, it can't mess with you nature of it. Um, it's right. strong. It's, it doesn't include fireball. Yeah, they right. mentioned fireball <laughs> early on. So this is really like cool ability if you want to be running around Curse of Strahd, if you want to be running around undead. You know, you have this that you get that creepy moment of like you're walking amongst zombies and they're just not really they're still, yeah. paying they're attention still to you. Oh yeah. And that's when things get way different with the undead. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> We have the form of dread. You manifest an aspect of your patron's dreadful power. As a bonus action, you transform for one minute and you gain the following benefits while transformed. You gain temporary hit points of 1d10 plus your warlock level. You instantly become very, very tanky. Uh, Once On top of this, once during each of your turns when you hit a creature with an attack, you can force it to make a wisdom saving throw. And if that saving throw fails, the target is now frightened of you until the next turn. That means that it has disadvantage on any attacks against you. Mm-hmm. Well, that's anybody. Oh, anybody. Yeah. Anyone, so we have disadvantage on ability checks. 
and Same attack time. rolls. Yeah. Yep. While the source of its fear is within the line of sight. Yep. It can't really move, move closer to you, but if you're in melee with it anyway, then and there's nothing that says you can't move closer to it, you know, before the end of your next turn, you know. Yeah, this, this really allows you to be that that force of fear, that Lord yeah. Soft, that death knight that's like blocking the hallway and everything's <laughs> like, I don't know. You yourself then also become immune to the friend condition. Yeah. You can transform a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and you regain all of, the, all of the uses of these after a long rest. Your appearance of the form of dread is some aspect of your patron. You can look either like shrouded, shrouded in shadows with a crown or robes from a lich patron, or you may transform and have like bat-like features if you have a, a vampire patron. An astute viewer noticed that you could also, this is finally your moment where you could actually have a Draco lich as a patron. Right. <laughs> um, because it's described as it's, a, it's, a, it's an elder undead, um, yeah. which I, I quite like as well. So uh, if you're playing a dragonborn, <laughs> That's really cool. It can get very and interesting and strange. Very much, very much. These, this these is two subclasses class could not be different, more different. They really, really can't. They really can't. First. Yeah, to me, the Undying is this weird mashup of like the Celestial and, and something that's undead themed. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not that any of its features are bad in theory. They're just a little underpowered. I really love, love the flavor of the Undying. Um, yeah, probably more so than the undead, but yeah, they could not be any more different than they are. Yeah. And we'll go ahead and go to the sixth level feature for the undead here. So yeah. grave touched, um, your, your patron's powers have a profound effect on your body and magic. You do know, you no longer need to eat, drink, or breathe. I always love this. I think it's always fun and thematic. Um, we saw this a little bit with the revived rogue as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love playing characters that don't need to breathe or blink. <laughs> I, I, I it's very unsettling. It's my favorite thing. Uh, so uh, in addition, when you hit a creature with an attack and roll damage against that creature, you can replace the damage type with necrotic. This is very useful. Not tons of things are immune to necrotic damage. Mm -hmm, There's mm -hmm. certainly some, but it, it, it will. this helps get over immunity. While you're using the form of dread, you can roll one additional damage die when you determine the ne necrotic damage the target takes. That, now, this is where we're getting into some of like that. This is where my eyebrow is like, oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> tell me more. That could be a lot of damage. <laughs> it could be a lot of damage. Um, as, as a lot of people have been talking about, Eldritch Blast. Yeah. And uh, remember, this is Unearthed Arcana. They tend to scale it pretty high and uh, in terms of its damage output. So if you were using Eldritch yeah. Blast, you would have a 1d10 plus another 1d10. Um, Plus your hex if you got that up. If you're using your hex, charisma. which I would be using shroud, <laughs> spirit shroud, which exists mm. now um, for warlocks. So I'd be concentrating mm. on that. Uh, that way you can attack any target you want to as well. Um, yeah, with Eldritch Blast, this is pretty powerful. Yeah, I mean, but we already knew that Eldritch Blast spam could be powerful. Like this, this makes, you know, this gives you an extra die of damage, but it's like, it's not like it suddenly changes how a lot of people play warlock, you know? We already knew that 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 was the case right that's and how i look kind of look at it we we did discuss a bit off camera but like if you're the hex blade warlock um you know you, the target of your hex uh, you get damage equal to your proficiency bonus added on top of your agonizing blast so that's not really it, you know at six level you're getting a plus three which is not the average of an extra 1d10 it's not five so mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. still not as much damage you got a higher crit rating if you're playing say a hex blade warlock and you're trying to do the whole uh, spamming of Eldritch Blast. Yeah. Obviously, this gets really dangerous if you're talking about some of the new Unearthed Arcana. You're talking about, like, you know, uh, Quicken Spell. So you're la laying down extra Ooh. Eldritch Blasts. Yeah, that's that would be really nasty. That you move into nasty. Fighter and you do Action Surge. <laughs> so I, this is going to be adjusted. It will be. I, I think... I wouldn't be surprised if it's, like, once a turn you can add this extra damage. That's, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if that's how it ends up. I wouldn't be shocked at all or um, to per target. Well, even yeah. then, it's still very powerful, but uh, sure. I, we'll see. I, I'm going to try to play it myself, actually, hopefully tonight. Um, very much a blade lock. So yeah. that I don't get abusive and, and horrible, <laughs> be a horrible player to my 4DM. 
Uh, so let's go back to the Undying. So yep. looking at the Undying, and at sixth level, they get Defy Death. Starting at sixth level, you can give yourself Vitality. That allows you to cheat death, or when you help someone else cheat it, you gain hit points equal to 1d8 plus your constitution modifier. Uh, when you succeed on a death saving throw, or when you stabilize a creature with Spare the Dying. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until a long rest. Ah. I love the feature. I just want to use it more than once a long rest. I totally want to use it more than... It's it's not... Like, how often are you going... I mean, if you right. need to be using this feature and you can use it more than once, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're in a bad way. Right, yeah. Like, you're I've probably been in not fights. getting a long rest. <laughs> right. Like, if you can abuse this... Yeah, I think this is where the Undying starts to show its age because I'm not sure that, that this feature would have that that rider or that restriction if it was remade. I don't think it was an intentional pun by Jim, by Jim, <laughs> Mr. Jim Davis, but yes, the Undying is showing its age. I'm going to have to tweet that out. Uh, so it's a very straightforward thing. Yeah, you're great at uh, buffing your party and you, you're a little tanky, I guess. I'm not sure tanky is the word. This yeah. is a very <laughs> desperate ability at sixth level. First, I like. I, well, here's what I really like about it: when you pass a death save, you're getting more than like, say, you crit a death save and you get like you come back with one, but then you're at one hit point. Right. Whereas this, it's like, uh, you know, D8 plus con mod could be really, really useful uh, at mm -hmm. that. Like, you want more than at least more than one hit point when you come back. But so, uh, yeah, it's just a little eh, underwhelming. Yeah. So we'll go right up to the Undying's well, tenth level. Of Ability, it's undying nature. Beginning at 10th level, you can hold your breath indefinitely. It's very similar to the undead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you don't require food, water, or sleep, although you still do require a rest to reduce exhaustion. Uh, in addition, you age at a slower rate. For every 10 years that pass, your body ages only one year, and you are immune to being uh, magically aged. This is just purely flavor. There's just almost There's no penalty for being old like there used to be in D&D. &D. No, um, that doesn't yeah. exist anymore. I mean, like, certainly I like this for flavor, but it is almost purely flavor. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, what I like is that you don't need to sleep. And that's what that's like the one difference it has from uh, right. the uh, mortal husk. That, yeah. Uh, or not mortal husk, but grave touch. And again, I feel like the undying is just really, and I, I kind of feel this way about most of what's in Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide um, is showing its age. And I don't know if there's any way to like remedy that. I would argue that like some of those things have been improved because of the spells that are available now. Um, yeah. That came out yeah. There. But um, let's go ahead and look at then the 10th level ability for the undead. Um, it's interesting. So Mortal Husk. Your connection to undeath and necrotic energy now saturates your body. You have resistance to necrotic da you know, damage. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in your transformed form of dread, you instead become immune to necrotic damage. I love this. Yeah, that's There's, strong. <laughs> I, I, there, there can be some real interesting overlap if you're like walking amongst a necrotic um, AOE. And also, right. if you want to just beat a vampire senseless. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to just punch straw to death um he's there are a lot of all, nasty spells that, that just you don't have to worry about you're just like nope i i, I adore this it's very specific it's very mm -hmm. thematic i don't think it's abusive um in addition when you are reduced to zero hit points this i love this is a uh, great one you can cause your body to explode each creature within 30 feet of you takes necrotic damage equal to 2d10 plus your warlock level. You then revive with one hit point in your previous space along with all your gear and you gain one level ex of exhaustion. Mm -hmm. Once you revive this way, you can't do so again until you finish 1d4 long rests. Yep. Uh, that, that could be a little fiddly, um, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it gets a little fiddly in terms of like have another thing yeah, that players keep track. Keep track yeah, keep of. track. Sure. I feel like you're keeping track of when you explode, though. Right. Yeah, I, I think so too. I and the other things like it's one level of exhaustion, big deal. Like you get advantage, disadvantage on your on your abilities uh, checks, which is you can you can live with that. That's that's not that big a deal. I played a berserker up to double digit levels and routinely had one to two levels of exhaustion. I. Uh, yeah. yeah, I, I, uh, this is this is a healthy amount of damage. Like two d ten, plus your warlock level, 
So you're, yeah. you're looking at 2d10 plus 10 by the time you get here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could be in the fight and you could just take out everybody around you. Yep. You're, just, you're just kind of exploding with ne- necrotic energy. I love how gross it is. Um, it, it's great if you are, again, a blade lock and you're in the thick of it. Yeah. And you're probably fighting something that's been whittled down as well. It's probably like, you know, there's a lot of creatures around you if you're in melee that are, you know, your allies are, yeah, uh, have hurt. Now you can't like exclude them from the attack, but eh, you know, that's what uh, healing's for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I really like this ability. I think it's a, uh, I think it's really fun. Um, again, that immu- immunity to necrotic damage. I, I like quite a bit. Uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, anything else to pull out of that? I mean, you're, also on top of this, like you can make two choices here. You're looking at, you probably have already cast all your spells at this point. You're probably like in, in the thick of it. So mm-hmm. I, you probably aren't doing Hellish Rebuke. Right. I would recommend taking Tomb of Levistus for once because you know Ooh. you're going to be at one hit point. So if you come back to one hit That's point, the- use your reaction. Mm-hmm. That That's you- the thing. It, it it really depends on when you're, when you're, turn an initiative is because it's like if you're right before a bunch of enemies or something or yeah or, you know you're not going to get to go it could be really nasty because it's like oh you're only at one well you're just going to die again i have seen like half works that's happened to them you know yeah yeah you know. and this is like a good opportunity to use tomb of levistus actually yes. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> there's not much you can do you just hope everyone tries to heal you while you're in there right. <laughs> <laughs> Or like, like no, you exploded all over us. <laughs> God, yeah, it turned to mist somehow. Um, so let's go back to the undying. Um, so go back to the undying, and we've got. Uh, uh, we already did that. So we're 14th mm-hmm. level. So indestructible life. When you reach 14th level, you can partake of some of the true secrets of the undying. On your turn, you can use a bonus action to regain hit points equal to 1d8 your warlock level. Additionally, you uh, can reattach several body parts. Can't yep. do this again until a short or long rest. Um, so yeah, you're uh, you're kind of doing the opposite at 14th level. You're you're gaining right. back hit Putting points. Back <laughs> you're getting your warlike level back. You're you're just hard to kill. Um, what what severs a body part like per the rules? Like I know no, the DM can no, always just nothing, be like not even a sort of sharpness anymore. anymore? I don't even know if that does it. Uh, oh man! Yeah, so it's good. It's it's evocative and funny, and I would totally do it to be creepy, to be a re- reattaching limbs and that kind of thing. I do it for fun. Yeah, just for fun, <laughs> as a parlor game. You know, like uh, <laughs> this is a party you think trick. You're, you think you're tough? Take my arm off. Yeah. Oh, you want to clear out a tavern? Uh, but again, this is pretty low key at 14th level. Yeah, yeah. A once, you know, a once per uh, short rest, you know, it's a bonus action. That's nice. But it's like D8 plus 14 at that level is like, all right, you know, it's, it's not nothing. Um, but I, for something called indestructible life, I, I want something else. Yeah. You know, I, I want something that's like, you can't die. <laughs> this know, doesn't you... have a lot of flair. This doesn't. It have... doesn't. No. Yeah. Uh, so then but what does <laughs> is yeah the, well, you is know, the undead treat your body like it's a thing that you just drive around yeah we got we got <laughs> spirit projection do you want you want to walk us through spirit projection oh yes so uh here i would you mind scrolling up a bit i uh I yeah, don't yeah. Think I have, oh. uh, <laughs> our shared screen is uh, blocks of so your body is now simply a vessel for your spirit as an action you can project your spirit from your body the body you leave behind is unconscious and left in a state of suspended animation. Your spirit can remain outside your body for up to an hour or until your concentration is broken, as if concentrating on a spell. When your projection ends, your spirit returns to your body or your body magically teleports to your spirit space. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's your choice. Uh, while you're projecting as a spirit, you gain the following benefits. Your spirit and body gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. And uh, when you cast a spell of the Conjuration or Necromancy schools, the spell doesn't require verbal, somatic, or material components that lack a gold cost. Um, And then you have a flying speed equal to your walking speed and can hover. You can even move through creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain, but you take D10 force damage if you end your turn inside a creature or object. Uh, 
And then while you are using your form of dread, once during each of your turns when you deal necrotic damage to a creature, you regain hit points equal to half the amount of necrotic damage dealt. Uh, once you use this feature, you cannot do so again until you finish the long rest. That's, that is a that is a subclass capstone. <laughs> it is. It's lovely. Right? I I it's don't feel like I don't feel like it's too powerful. I just feel like this is what you should get at 14th level. Yeah. You know, when we look at like the lurker in the deep uh warlock, um that's some crazy tentacle tentacles destroy everybody or teleport you somewhere else. I mean, like this is the kind of this is the kind of capstone you want to see. Yeah, yeah. And I mean 14th level, you're what mid third tier, you know, like you're getting yeah. into that realm of of these things start to become not so like it, it looks overpowered if you've only ever played tier one characters. But yes. by 14th level, this is you should I would expect something like this. If you're going uh, into goblin most... villages, then you're yeah. <laughs> Right, you're just, doing just it murdering people you're just for a no bully. reason. You know, you're just a bully if you're doing. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So it really sees you using necrotic spells and uh, and conjuring spells with no cost. And that, that, yeah, yeah. So I, you I, are the, like a banshee almost. You are almost like a wraith. Um, that's you're still how I look. Hitable. At it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, still be hit. You could pass through things. Like that was sort of my question when I first looked at it. Was like, well, can I hit things? as this like can i use physical attacks and then like yeah that you must be able to because someone else can hit you they don't need a magical weapon to do it exactly you know it, um, i do like the utility that comes with this because this allows you to for a very long period of time just float through things you want to like infiltrate a castle mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh you can just teleport I, your body to you once you've gone inside yeah yeah i i think it's i think a lot of what what might be overpowered about it is negated by the fact that it's concentration based. It is concentration you know, based. You're not going to be concentrating on any of the other concentration spells you might have. You're not keeping that hex up all day. Like, you know, some people play their warlocks. Um, so yeah. that to me, that's the balancing thing. Um, you know, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing resistance is nice, but you're still taking half of that and things hit pretty hard. <laughs> um, it's the, it's that last one though, when you're in your form of dread, uh, once during each of your turns, when you deal necrotic damage, you regain hit points equal to half. That's not temp HP. That's no. not, you just like get your hit points back. Yeah. So you'd have to be fighting an enemy who spams chill touch at you, which you may or may not be immune yeah, to. You very well may be. <laughs> <laughs> because of the uh, resistance that you have to it. But immunity. you are very much that like that undead feeding off the life of the ones that you are attacking. Yeah, uh, it's really cool. It. It, yeah, I, it's not. I don't feel it's overpowered. I feel like it's just delicious and fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if anything, it's it, to me. It's like grave touch is the part where I where I was like, whoa, this is like this has crossed the line uh, into overpowered. Yeah, but like once we once all said is said and done, yeah, there's a little bit of overlap maybe with some of these abilities. But if I could see a campaign where there is the undying warlock and there is the undead warlock. And I, they would be doing two very different things. Yeah, they would be super creepy together and gothy. Certainly, um, certainly. But I don't feel that the undying should detract from the existence of the undead. Uh, yeah, yeah. If anything, what I would add to the undying is more healing type abilities. Like it's supposed to be balancing life and death. You don't right. have to have an undead as your patron for the undying. You could have Ooze or or Fist and Danalus. And in that sense, to me, it's the thematic elements that really separate the two of them and make them, you know, worth being two separate uh, packs. But I would like something else for the undying, some other like the ability to bring someone back from the dead, the ability to you know yes. even just raise dead on their <laughs> on their bonus spell list or expanded spell list. Exactly, you know? something yeah. like that. Something you know, I, I think if the undying had raise raise the dead, revivify. Oh yeah. Um, thematically, that would make way more sense. I'd give up feign death for a vivify. I no problem with that. Oh yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> it's very handy. Oh, that was spell component. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't do. have to worry about that diamond. <laughs> don't have to worry about that diamond. That, that would make uh, Lauren Irvin very happy <laughs> in, in my campaign. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I feel. I how would you build this again? I I feel like the undead is definitely a blade lock. Uh, after we've discussed it 
Um, yeah, I that's sort of my was my first thought just because I you know there's the Warcraft Deathlocks or not Deathlock but Death Knights. Um, yeah, Lord Lord reading like Lord Soth could be your you know one of your patrons just like oh yeah well my <laughs> my Oathbreaker uh, Pally dead uh, the undead warlock now has a patron so <laughs> it's um. It, what I, you, you know, I really love the tenth level ability where you explode. It's almost like, yeah, you never want to die. I mean, no. You never want to get reduced to zero hit points. But boy, it will be funny when you do. It'll be great. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just one last. Just I love like a death curse or you know anything, anything in fiction where it's like, yeah, you could kill that wizard, but don't do it where where you can hear them whisper their death curse at you. Yeah. You know, anything that's like, yeah, one last little bit of, of Baylor's death throws or something like that. Love abilities like that. Yeah. It's, um, it's all, it all stacks very well. And this is what we're seeing in a lot of new UA is making sure that things kind of lead into each other. It tells a really great story. I think it's a very yeah. unique story. It's my favorite warlock for sure. Um, I, I play a lot of characters. I mean, obviously, but my, my personal character is very undead focused before and immortality and all that stuff. My first thought was actually somebody made this specifically for Todd. <laughs> they may have. <laughs> I'm not saying that people didn't reach out about it. <laughs> I will. I will. Yeah. Um, they were aware that I would be very excited for this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and my very gothic tendencies. I even had sure. a few uh i had i had about i got probably about seven text messages the moment they announced this that day throughout the day uh like, dude did you see this right <laughs> like, right I'm like, I'm like yeah i saw it it's Trust great me. Yeah. like i i'm i actually ran down from my loft um downstairs uh to tell my wife uh like a child on christmas day i uh <laughs> That's how silly I am about uh -huh. stuff. <laughs> and then I, I've been watching nothing but like hammer horror films. All, you oh, know. Yeah. 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 I just started. Well, yeah. Very I, good. Yeah. So I, I'm very excited for this. This is, I think this is the one. I, I think I'm in love. This, this subclass is wonderful. Yeah. I think Bane is underrated because I never think about casting Bane, but whoo. Yeah, it's it's a it's a nice spell, especially like early on, because the D4's you know reduction in I think it's like both attack rolls and ability checks. I'm sure it's like it the is. opposite of blast. So right? if you get some AOE casters, you you you're being a party player. Yeah, there's some fun stuff there. It's like you if you know so what is it like the the best um, damage mitigation is damage. Like, that's sort of like one of the things, but it's also like not getting hit is <laughs> a really good way to survive. It is. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Like and well. That's why I like, okay, we've got, you know, the Phantom Steed I love, but you know, yeah. fan, Phantasmal Force, like you don't have to be in the thick of it. This gives you options. And certainly you're not getting smites like the Hexblade. Um, if you're wanting to be that blade lock, you do have to have a high strength. So you've got two different stats you're paying attention to. So mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. want high strength, high charisma, but I love, I love that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's one of those that benefits from like a, you know, like taking your first level in fighter and the rest of it in, in warlock. But um, I also like just a straight, I, I warlock. Or I, I like just classes. I'm, I've, I've really come down on multi-classing lately. Uh, just like uh, all in on a class. I, I also agree. I, I've gotten kind of worn out by uh, yeah. <laughs> multi-classing as well. Uh, we got some questions from chat here. I don't want yeah. to ignore. Mm. So we will go ahead and get that. Um, do, do, we've got... Anyone remembering the Undying Light Warlock from the old Underdark UA? This is pretty much from it, though the rest of the kit Sora became the Celestial. Hmm. Um, I don't I remember it, but I don't remember the specifics. Very vaguely. It. Another question yeah. was off the top, multi class ideas. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oathbreaker <I'm>, Paladin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I always, yeah, you know, I, what warlock doesn't eventually dip into Paladin? Um, yeah, Shadow Sorcerer makes a really good one too. I love Shadow Sorcerers. I do love Shadow Sorcerers yeah. actually. Uh, I, I, that's certainly a good tip. I, I'm just tempted, to, I just want to get to all of the abilities though in this one like i don't feel like i, I need to go into something else yeah um, I, I know a lot of people complain about how the fact that like the subclass and class features don't always line up 
you know, like you don't always get them at, at set levels for every class, but I love the fact that it really forces you if you want to multi-class, it, it's a real choice because it's like you want that one, like you're one level away from that ability. Would you rather yeah. take this multi-class or would you just keep going, right? Is it just worth it? Like, class. you want to get the cool stuff. Um, yeah. I, I'd be pretty sorely tempted to go all in. Uh, maybe I'd look at, I dip into Paladin, but um mm -hmm. Maybe a yeah, maybe a dip. I, I, and this is a, this might be a, a weird one because of the stat uh, requirements, but like a dip into necromancer as well. Like even if it's just to pick up like the wizard rituals, and mm -hmm. if you were going any more than a dip, like it's it's hard to justify six levels of wizard on top of fourteen of, <laughs> of a warlock. But I don't know, you do get beefed up on dead. <laughs> That's true. I could see a world where I would do that. You know? Yeah, I could see that um okay well i think we've kind of explored this these are like well like we said these are two very different subclasses um i unearth our contents to be overpowered mm -hmm. I, I see that one ability being toned down a bit <laughs> i do like it but i don't feel like it's abusive for someone who's using a weapon right i don't think that's abusive at all uh, yeah if anything the real issue is how good eldritch blast is with some of the Im invocations and yeah and just how ubiquitous it seems to be. I, I think a very simple correction would be um, any attack with a weapon or a spell first level or higher. That's a good, yeah, that's another good way to, to Which is straight. very often how things are worded in the first place. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you, when we got another question, how do you handle a PC who's thinking about switching patrons mid-campaign? I think that's one of the easiest things to do. Uh, and boy, have I switched a few subclasses in yeah. one can three times in one campaign, um, and I feel terrible. Yeah. But those were for reasons of party cohesion. Um, so I think I'm okay with it. I think mm -hmm. of, it, of all the things, I think artificers make a lot of sense because maybe they change change their specialty, they yep. focus on something else. Um, I it think makes perfect sense for warlocks. I mean, now I, that doesn't mean it course. comes without repercussions, right? Like your old right. patrons probably going to be really upset that it doesn't have a pawn anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, you know, yeah. go to sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 li I like the role play aspects of that. So I, I would have no problem with that. I, I, t I tend to also have problems like if a class or a subclass is not working for you. Um, yeah, oh, it's okay change. You only want to do that so many times can be detrimental. Um, luckily, it's kind of built into my character that you know, he dies, and he comes back as something else all the time. But this mm -hmm. is like the thing I would stick with. Okay. Um, how would you incentivize an undead other than a vampire to serve as a warlock patron? How would I incentivize them? I, they, everyone likes a, everyone likes a, you know, someone that will do stuff for them. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can see some of the more powerful liches, like they've got other things going on. They're, they're in the middle of a, a century long spell research. Right. They can't afford to go somewhere. They're also gross, worm-ridden, uh, walking corpses. You know, yeah. they might need someone who can pass for living. Someone um, who's look at charisma. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I can certainly see that uh, as, as being one. You know, if, if you think of it like Lord Soth, Lord Soth might have it because like you've sworn fealty to him. You know, like he's literally your undead liege lord yeah. as well as your patron, you know. Yeah, absolutely. 